Digimon, everybody Digimon, everybody Digimon, know your dreams and know yourself, cause all dreams wish you well, scary dreams, strange dreams, all dreams wish you well, oh yeah, all dreams wish you well. Know your dreams and know yourself Know for sure all your dreams Always wish you well Scary dreams and happy dreams Do always wish you well Come on everybody dream on Everybody dream on Know your dreams and know yourself Cause all dreams wish you well Scary dreams, strange dreams, all dreams wish you well, oh yeah, all dreams wish you well. Know your dreams and know yourself Know for sure all your dreams Always wish you well Scary dreams and happy dreams Do always wish you well Come on everybody dream on Everybody dream on Know your dreams and know yourself Cause all dreams wish you well Scary dreams, strange dreams, all dreams wish you well, oh yeah, all dreams wish you well. Know your dreams and know yourself Know for sure all your dreams Always wish you well Scary dreams and happy dreams Do always wish you well Come on everybody dream on Everybody dream on Know your dreams and know yourself Cause all dreams wish you well Scary dreams, strange dreams, all dreams wish you well, oh yeah, all dreams wish you well. Know your dreams and know yourself Know for sure all your dreams Always wish you well Scary dreams and happy dreams Do always wish you well Come on everybody dream on Everybody dream on Know your dreams and know yourself Cause all dreams wish you well Scary dreams, strange dreams, all dreams wish you well, oh yeah, all dreams wish you well. Know your dreams and know yourself Know for sure all your dreams Always wish you well Scary dreams and happy dreams Do always wish you well Come on everybody dream on Everybody dream on Know your dreams and know yourself Cause all dreams wish you well Scary dreams, strange dreams, all dreams wish you well.
Know your dreams and know yourself. Know for sure all your dreams. Always wish you well. Scary dreams and happy dreams. Do always wish you well. Come on, everybody, dream on. Everybody, dream on. Know your dreams and know yourself. Know your dreams and know yourself. Know for sure all your dreams. Always wish you well. Scary dreams and happy dreams. Do always wish you well. Come on, everybody, dream on. Everybody, dream on. Know your dreams and know yourself. Cause all dreams wish you well. Scary dreams, strange dreams, all dreams wish you luck, oh yeah, all dreams wish you luck. Yes, all dreams wish us well. I'm Patricia Eltenge, and this is my show, Know Your Dreams. That was a song written and sung by my friend in India, Mohandas, for me and my show. So what do we mean by all dreams wish us well? Well, whether they are scary dreams, disturbing dreams, even fun dreams, even sex dreams. They all bring us messages that are important to our daily lives. So tonight, we're going to hit on how to capture your dreams, dream symbols and their meanings, and how your dreams can help us toward our personal growth and transformation. So now I'm ready to talk to my first caller. Hi, Patricia. This is John. Hi, John. Well, do you want to talk about your dreams or do you have questions about dreams? Well, I want to talk about a dream I had. Great. So uh, the dream is a brief one. I went with a friend to vacation in India and we were in a very kind of uh, mm, crazy downtown area, as you would imagine, a lot of chaos, but, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. And we both had bed and breakfast to stay in. So he went to go to his, and then I went to mine. Well, my bed and breakfast was a mattress in a truck, <laughs> and I, I laid down, and there was a woman laying down on, on this same mattress next to me, um, and she was like a very humble, quiet, gentle, uh, woman from Mexico. And, you know, I don't speak Spanish, so we didn't talk, but she was there. I, I felt comfortable. And then a couple of minutes later, her husband came in and again, another really lovely, humble, kind person, quiet. And he laid down between us and then there we were, you know, and um, so then a little while later, I I went out to kind of check things out, and I realized that my wallet was missing. I felt reached in my pocket, and my wallet was missing, and, and at first I was worried, and then I said, well, you know, it's this is a dream. I didn't lose my wallet. So then I was, I was looking for my friend, and um, I'm missing one part of it. Uh, Oh, shoot. Anyway, uh, it just turned out to be a good... Oh, I got lost. That's what it was. I, I, I realized I didn't know where I was. I was kind of going in a circular direction. And, you know, in real life, that would really freak me out. In this dream, I wasn't worried about it at all. I just knew that it would all work out and that I would find my way. And then that, that was the dream. Well, first of all, I'm going to start with... The reason why I teach in Chapter 7 of my book, The Dream Class, Know Your Dreams, Know Yourself, 
we talk about how to capture your dreams and all my followers keep a pad or a journal by the bedside because the dreams disappear very easily as soon as we open our eyes because we're in the Lyman state. So that being said, in the future, keep a pad by the bed and jot your dreams down before you open your eyes. And there's a, the, the teaching is in chapter seven, but to your dream now, and uh, th very interesting dream because you have ma a man and a woman image in your dream. Now part of you, uh, as everyone in your dreams is an aspect of yourself, so you have the masculine and the feminine. Now, oddly enough, in, in this training, the, the male figure represents your feminine and the female figure represents your masculine. So in this dream, you are coming together androgynously, which means your right and left sides of your brain and how you think and feel. So your thinking is the masculine side, your feeling is the feminine, and you're coming together in this dream. But in a sense, you all of a sudden you have lost your identity wallets represent your identity and somehow you've lost your identity so you're coming together androgynously but you're not used to this feeling of coming together in a very balanced way with your masculine and, and your feminine so there's a feeling that is to you that you are a little lost with this this new uh that you have embraced, you're lying down with these, the, ma the man and the woman, a and you are, seem to be comfortable in this situation. So you're coming together with your thoughts and your feelings, and then you feel a little, uh, you've lost your identity, which is your wallet, and then you're going in circles. So again, there's a, lo a little bit of a lost feeling here. So then what we do is talk about how to connect the dots from your dream world to your waking life and how is does that ring to can you connect to something in your waking life where you are um, maybe uh, going in circles uh, and not quite um, in a direction that you know where you're going yes you know it's, it's nothing dramatic but yes i don't really have a specific direction okay. that I'm going in. Yeah, but what's happening is you have thoughts and feelings that are come together. So in a sense, mm -hmm. that's that's the start of, of coming together. You are formulating your direction because you don't seem to be worried. In the dream, you're not worried. And another thing I like in this dream, this is a lucid dream because you were aware you were dreaming. And that's very yeah. interesting. So that means your your subconscious mind, what's below the surface, is coming to your conscious mind, but you're aware of it. So you have a very uh, strong sense of awareness with you and connection with your subconscious mind, which I love. And mm -hmm. that's what the dream training does. It brings us closer to what's beneath the surface and we can um, connect with it more readily. And with this dream work, you start to really move through your life more smoothly because you, you start getting the messages and connecting to, oh, why am I doing this? Oh, I'm doing this, but maybe I want to work on my direction. So this dream will bring you, uh, since you're going in a circle in your dream and you don't quite know, uh, under, know your identity, you've given up maybe an old identity and you're, you're looking to maybe reinvent yourself or um, find some new direction, but you don't seem to be worried about it. You are, it, you are processing. You're w going in this yeah. circle and you're processing. And it felt like everything was gonna turn out. There was nothing to worry about. Like mm -hmm. it, I knew that the, the money was, the wallet, you know, it, I knew that there was nothing to worry about. It was a dream. And even though I was kind of going in a way where I wasn't familiar, mm -hmm. I felt like eh, it's going to all turn out. It, 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 it didn't scare me mm -hmm. like some dreams might. Well, this it is interesting. It felt, it felt like you're, you're processing. You're, you're understanding. Mm -hmm. You have a, in your subconscious mind, you have an understanding that you're just, you're having a work in progress right now. And you're going with mm -hmm. the flow and you're going in your circle and you're working on it. 
you've come together in some sense with your masculine and your feminine, your thinking and your feelings, uh, whether it be on the thinking side, the masculine side would be your work life, uh, your productivity. The feminine side would be your feeling centeredness and uh, your, um, your, your sense of self. So uh, this is a great, all dreams are great, but this is a great dream that, uh, and I love your awareness. So well, I'm thank you. going to get ready for my next caller, and I so thank you for calling in. Thank you so much, Patricia. Now I want to tell you all to press the subscribe button below and look at our little information, how you can get in touch with me uh, if you want to make a private appointment, and that is dream, thedreamclass.com. And the book, again, is The Dream Class. Know your dreams, know yourself. So, that being said, I'm ready for my next caller. How are you? Who am I speaking with? Hello. 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 I, I, I thought there was two in front of me. So, um... We have you here. You're with me now. Okay. Okay. Well, my my question was, I have had a recurrent dream for years now where a doorbell rings. At four can you five can you morning, speak? Like, what What is your name? What is your name? Your first name? My name is Janine Kennedy. No, just your first name. Janine. Janine, can you speak a little louder for me or speak into the phone a little better? Yes. Yeah. There you is go. Is this better? Much better. Thank you. Okay, I have a recurring dream for years where a doorbell rings, and I think it's the doorbell at 4 or 5 in the morning, and I live by myself, so it makes me a little uncomfortable, or I, I live by myself now. I was with my son before, and the doorbell would ring, and I would get up to see who was there at 4 or 5 in the morning, and I don't get up that early, and there's nobody there. Um, and this so is a recurring I, dream. I so this is the this is the whole dream. This this recurring th that someone's at the yeah, door at that hour that, of the morning. Yeah, somewhere around that time, a doorbell rings, and it's a very clear doorbell. Last mm. night it was a gong, mm. and last night it was the night before I had a session with some spirit guides today. Oh. So I don't know if that was significant, but last night a gong rang, and it. At first, it scares me because I live by myself, and I think that there's somebody in my house. Maybe someone's coming in. What's the problem? No one rings my doorbell at that hour, but it's it's very clearly a doorbell. And last night, a gong. Well, and when you know, when we get, get these auditory um, uh, things in our dream world, it really is impacting, and we're supposed to pay attention to it. So I say, what is waking? What is telling you to wake up? Wake up and smell the coffee, girl. You know, there's something that's been pounding. How many years has this been going on where you have this recurring dream? Um, years well, or it's weeks at least or months? Five years. Mm -hmm. It's coming. There's something that in your uh, your subconscious mind is really. When we have recurring dreams, it is really about unresolved issues. So something's been trying to come through to you that you're blocking. So when you have it at five o'clock in the morning, what is five o'clock in the morning mean to you? Our dreams are all very individual. So what is five o'clock in the morning to you, typically? What would that represent to you? Sleep, because I work late. I work with people from all time zones. Mm -hmm. I'm not up at five, but it's not always five. It's different times. And, when, it, and it doesn't happen very often. It's far and few between. Does it wake you up? Yes, absolutely. Because oh, does the I'm does sure the dream wake you up at the actual time or in the dream it's five o'clock? Um, at the actual time, I oh. hear the doorbell. I get up and I go to see who's at the door. In re in re wait, in waking night. life, you get up after you hear the the, yeah. the the bell in your dream. Then you get up and you actually go to the door. Yes, because I'm sure someone's there. In your I'm wake, scared, you're awake you know? when you do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm awake. Okay. It wakes me up. So it wakes me up out of a sound sleep. There's something I want you to pay attention. I want you to start keeping a, a dream book by your bed and keep your eyes closed. When you hear that sound again, you 
you write down what images you saw just before the bell. You don't open your eyes mm -hmm. right away. The bell woke you up, but there was some images coming through right before the bell, and those are important messages, and somehow you're blocking them out. This, your subconscious mind is trying to br bubble up through to you, and there are images, even if you can capture the smallest image with your eyes closed, I'll tell you why. There's, some, there's a state of consciousness called the Lyman state, and that only lasts three to four minutes, but the second you open your eyes, you're out of the state. So if you open your eyes, it was mm -hmm. you know, two, uh, two seconds after you uh, w are wa upon waking, you won't capture the images or you won't understand what images were coming through. So have the discipline to keep your eyes closed and reach for the book and, d oh, oh, there was a cat. Oh, there, oh, a mountain. There's a mountain, oh, a road, mm -hmm. old car. So scribble down anything with your eyes closed because right before that bell, there were some images. And you're opening, your, eye, you're, you're opening your eyes too soon because they disappear like this. Yes, that, that makes sense because I, I'm sleeping soundly, so it does wake me up and I immediately open my eyes. And I do have a book beside my bed. Okay, don't so open I your will, eyes. Don't open I your will. eyes. This is, this is like Keep I my said, eyes closed. yeah, chapter seven is how to capture your dreams. And this is a very important lesson to start the dream work because the messages coming through need to be captured. And, and they, they're, 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 it's such a thin veil between our subconscious mind and our conscious mind that they, things fade away so fast the second you open your eyes. We're, we're out of that state where we can capture it. So get a hold of I me and uh, yeah. get, come, come, come back again and we'll, we'll talk about what images we're really trying to come through because repetitive dreams are, are really um, unresolved issues that are trying, trying to get resolved. Was there a difference in the gong versus the doorbell? Is yes, there's a big difference. It's trying to beat you over the head now because you're not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so now, but the next Got thing, it. it's going to be ba-boom, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> it's really trying to come through. So have the discipline to uh, keep your eyes closed and see what there was there. There's something trying to bubble through. And, and don't be judgmental as, oh, that was nothing. I'm not going to write that. Anything you see, write it down, any image, whether it's a, an animal. We, we dream in terms of uh, uh, the hierarchy of people, nature, and things. So the f that when it's mm -hmm. further away from coming to consciousness, we're going to be dreaming of uh, symbols that are things, like a table, a chair, a car. Then there'll be the next level coming through to consciousness will be uh, uh, nature. So that's landscape, trees, uh, animals. Then the next, then coming through further to consciousness, it's going to be people. So as we do the work and as we allow the, the symbols, to, the images to come through and open up the channels, open up the windows, uh, you'll be surprised. It's, it's there. It's, it's really trying to beat you over the head. <laughs> so if you want to go deeper well, with me... I, Get a hold of me at yes. thedreamclass.com. Yes, I appreciate that. My friend Francois told me that I had to take a break from writing my own book, and I'm going to also buy your book right away. So thank you so much. I appreciate that, and give me a five-star review. <laughs> oh, thank you again for calling. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. I'm ready for another caller. Hello? Yes. Hi, how are you? Who is this? My name is Joe. Joe, great for you to call in. Do you have a dream for me or questions about dreams? Yeah, I had one interesting dream last year. Like it was like late fall of last year. It was like just one time that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so basically, um, in the dream, I'm in my 
apartment awaken and for some reason I'm wandering through the rooms like I'm wandering through my room then I go off into the bathroom then into the kitchen and then it's like I'm searching for something or I don't know why I'm wandering through and then um I wander into the living room and then um I for some reason I look out the window and I've never it, it was like I look up into the sky for some reason and it's like all dark clouds everywhere I've, I've never seen it. It, it was like I look up into the sky and it's like every everywhere from north south east west all the directions it's like all dark clouds and it's like it's it looks so real and um I, i've just never seen anything like it and then afterwards i um just go back i, I um don't look out the window anymore and all of a sudden i just awaken and i mean i know it's a dream but like looking out when i remember it like looking out the window it, it felt like so real like looking at the clouds everywhere i've just never seen so many like dark clouds mm -hmm. like let me ask everywhere. you uh, where oh, where sorry. where uh where are you originally what were you originally from what area uh what state were you from sometimes uh these things come from certain something specific what are you from where oh i'm coming from washington dc Washington D.C. Huh? Do you have any relatives from an area where there was a severe weather or something like that? Did yeah, we get a lot of rain and um, like cold weather since it's the East Coast. Mm -hmm. You don't do you have any other or any ancestral re relatives that came from uh, other places of extremely severe weather that was ominous and scary. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've relatives that live in the area and some spread out. No, okay. Um, well, I, I was just saying if you had, sometimes there are ancestral dreams too. I was wondering if maybe you had somebody, a relatives that, like, sometimes ancestral dreams come through, but if you don't have anybody like from, from the tornado alley or the dust bowl area, anything like that, because I've, I've, I've met people who had ancestral dreams like that but in any case so the house represents yourself so if this ha if this was yourself what was going how many years ago what, where, what was going on in your life at the time where you seemed like you did you weren't comfortable in your in your own self because you're wandering w in your own house right where you lived you're 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 not really sure of where you are in there right you're you're wandering from room to room yeah. And you you do do you feel like you don't know the place? You're looking for something? Yeah, I, I know it's my own living space. It just was odd that like I'm going from room to room like as if I'm searching for something. Mm -hmm. Searching. You're searching, well, you're searching for, because you haven't found yourself at this time. How many years ago was this? You said five years ago? Oh, this dream, this dream was last, last year, late fall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, was that a time when you were searching, for do some soul searching or self searching? Oh, uh, it's been an interesting, it's been a tough past few years, especially with um, all that's going on. But when you had the dream, our dreams really are trying to give us a read, a barometer of where we're at. So uh, if you can go back and see, where were you at at the time of that dream? Where were you at in your life? Because you look, at, you look outside and it looks ominous to you from what you described, right? Yes. So you look outside, so you're, you're, but yet you're still uncomfortable er, searching within yourself, but out the, the exterior looks ominous and not inviting from what you describe. 
So is, does right. that describe where you are at in your life? Possibly, yes. Well, this, this typically is about our lives. And so a house is representational of, of yourself. That's you, that's your, your, your person. And you look out and it, the outside world looks ominous to you. And yet you're still not comfortable within your, your, your own self. So what have you been doing to overcome your discomfort with moving through life? Um, yeah, I've been working on myself, like focusing on myself these past few years. Um, de definitely investing a lot of time and effort um, in myself these past few years. Okay. Well, we say um, in our in our world uh, to do one thing a day, at least one thing a day, five days a week, towards some goal that you create for yourself, what you want to do with your life so that you can move outside and be in the world and when you're doing something one at least one thing a day five days a week you start being more comfortable with where you're going right so this is what i'm saying our dreams are helping us decide what we need to do to go forward in life connecting the dots from our dream world to our waking world Anyway, Joe, thank you so much for calling in. More will be revealed in the dream class. Know your dreams, know yourself. And bye for now. And I will take the next caller. Who am I speaking Hello? with? Hello. Jane Penwell. Great, Jane. What can I do for you today? Well, I've had one dream. I don't dream very often, but one dream. I'm going to interrupt you here because we all dream every day. Even our animals dream. Even the wild animals dream. So that being said, that's why we teach people how to capture their dreams, Chapter 7. Oh. <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, one that really resonated was that... Um, I bought a lottery ticket, and I dreamt that I won, and I could see exactly where I was in the 7-Eleven and the excitement that went with it. And so ever since then, I have gone back to that very same 7-Eleven to buy the tickets, uh, the Mega and the um, mm -hmm. uh, Powerball. And um, I, in my mind, I think, what would I do with that um, winning? And in my mind, I would love to adopt some of those children at the border and also donate to St. Jude's. Okay, well. Children. Those are very altruistic goals. And I will also add, our dreams come to us in symbols. So the feeling you got when you won the lottery, what was going on in your life at the time pr just before having that dream? Was there, what was going on in your life that could have given you a sense of elation or that you have a feeling of success? Oh, jeez. Probably thinking about my children, my my son. At the right before you had this dream, when was this dream? The dream was about four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Now, what was going on in your life about four weeks ago? Probably worrying about my son. Worrying. Yes. Worrying. Okay, you were worrying about it. And, and why would you be worrying about your My son? children. Um, 
uh, because he is a nurse. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is in his 40s, and he is a nurse at an in an IC unit mm -hmm. um, in Roanoke, Virginia, mm -hmm. and I don't know. I just this was going my, on just prior to your dream. You're saying this. This fear you have right. about him, you have a fear for his life? Is that what you're saying? I always fear um, because um, my eldest son was killed mm -hmm. in an automobile accident. Mm -hmm. And his, grand, his child drowned mm -hmm. at 22 months. Mm -hmm. And well, I'm sorry to hear that. But let's go back to your dream, because your dr our dreams are trying to get us through to the next level of consciousness so that we can move through our life more graciously. And so when you had this dream about four weeks ago, what specifically do you think had was going on in, uh, that week in your life? Probably um, making a trip to visit him, he and, and the family. You did make a trip or you were organizing a trip? Um, you, you went on the trip? Yes, I uh, drove, um, uh, an, uh, rented an SUV and took some furniture that he inherited from a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, so you were able, so just before this dream, and were you w with him and staying there over th where he was when you had the dream, or were you back home already? No, I was back home. I was home. You were home. You were home for h how many days, would you say? Oh, um, I'm where I live. I mean, this is where I live, and that's where I had the dream. But how long after you had made that trip did you have this dream? Uh, probably a couple days after. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Making you had a trip. you've had a feeling. Of what I'm trying to teach you is what I teach in the book is how we connect our dream world with our waking world and how they're interconnected. And so when you went to go visit your son, and you were able to deposit this furniture or and come back you had an elated feeling. So the, dr the symbols aren't uh, really about winning the lottery, quote unquote. The dream is about the feeling that you gained from seeing your son, being with him and doing something for him that made you feel good. So this is how our Probably. dreams impact us. They impact the way we think and feel. So rather than going to the 7-Eleven, thinking you, you may, it might be more uh, uh, impacting for you and make you feel better to go visit more often, not just going to the 7-Eleven and get another lottery ticket. Really. But I can't. Well, that's what made you feel Because his wife good. is not, his wife is not, very kind to me. Okay, well, you can work something out with them. This is your dream is telling you that's what makes you feel good. So if you want to go deeper with me and we can do that, you can contact me at thedreamclass.com. I'm willing to help you get into it. It's a dream what? The, but it's a dream. It's, it my website is the dream how to contact me. The dream it's at the bottom of the screen, the dream Oh, okay. .com. And you can get in touch okay. with me, and we can go deeper and figure out how you can keep a feeling in your life, a feeling elated, like you won the lottery. And you can work okay. out ways to do that in your waking life, besides go making okay. trips to the lottery, to the lotto. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank, okay. Thank very you well. for calling thank in. You. I've got some callers uh -huh, waiting. Thank you. Uh huh. Bye bye. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And who am I talking with next? Hello, Patricia. My name is Hector. Thank you for taking my call. Yes, Hector. 
I was just, uh, Can you, you speak know, into the phone a little bit better? Are you on speakerphone? Oh, sorry, can you hear me now? I'd rather have you talk right into the phone, not the speaker. Oh, sorry, I'm using my Bluetooth because I oh. can't use the speaker right now. Is that, is that better? Oh, a little bit better, but yeah. Okay, let's just try. It's not I'll great. Be, I'll, I'll be quick then. Yeah, sorry. Uh, just My dreams uh, have to do with uh, falling, like um, falling from, you know, tall buildings or falling from elevators. Mm. I've never been afraid of, of falling, per se. I've never been afraid of, you know, being heights or having vertigo. But lately, they've been coming on consistently. And it's getting to the point where I'm waking up, like, at all hours of the night, stressing out. So I don't know if it's a premonition of some kind, but it's getting to the point where it's really affecting my, my sleep patterns. You know? Okay, well, here's what we want to do. We want to let you know what falling means. Falling in your dreams means when you're up high, you're in your head and you're thinking, you're in your productive mode. That's our masculine side. That's the yang. Now, falling is going into our feelings, into our feeling-centeredness, which is our yin, our feminine side. And if you're uh, being afraid of falling, in our dreams, we, I like to tell people, allow it to happen, fall, and see where you go. It really is, sometimes you just fall, and then oh, all of a sudden you're just, oh, I fell, and you're in a new place. All of a sudden you're in a, a beach. I, I, our dreams are really um, mysterious in that way, but falling is falling into your feelings, your feeling centeredness. So you're showing fear of feeling something, uh, there, and you want to stay. It, you're more comfortable staying in your head and being logical and rational and um, uh, uh, organized and productive. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. I appreciate that. That actually makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, so so when you allow yourself to feel and say, oh, what am I feeling? Just allow yourself to, in, so in your waking life, you can ask yourself, what am I afraid of feeling? Why, why am I not connected with, between my head and my body? Let's start to connect the two and be in touch with your feelings and recognize and identify your feelings. Because Thank feelings, you, I was worried it was like a yeah. No, no, this is, this is, very, this is a very uh, common dream and, and often um, people don't want to know what their feelings are, so they're staying out of touch with what they're feeling. But if you wanna be a whole, um, uh, manifesting yourself as an actualized human being, you want to be able to be in your thinking mode, your productive mode when you need to be, and be in your feel feeling centeredness when, you, when it's appropriate too. And recognize what you're feeling, because feelings aren't negotiable, they just are. But you can identify them and say, oh, I'm feeling this about this. That's interesting. So. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'll be able to sleep much better tonight knowing that. Thank you. Okay, thank you for calling in. Bye-bye. Do I have another caller? Hello, Patricia. My name is Maya. Oh, hello. What can we do for you today? What I would like to talk to you about is how much of the dream are we remembering or are we recounting as we're telling it. Do you know what I mean? After the after you dream, you mean upon waking? Yes. Well, that's and why we keep our say, eyes closed. Oh, I forgot about that. That's chapter seven. Do you have my book by chance? Yes, I do. Okay, we'll dive into chapter seven again because it's very specific methodology on how we capture our dreams and, the, and then there's why we dream bef in the earlier chapters. So we start putting it together in that way. So you keep your eyes closed and you scribble the images down and we don't start um, 
uh, being judgmental of what's going on in our dreams. Whatever is going on in our dream life is symbolic for other things. So not to be judgmental or embarrassed or afraid. Well, you can be afraid if you want to be afraid, but it's basically just uh, uh, symbolically bringing you um, uh, metaphors for s things that in your life that you can be adjusting and moving forward in your life in, in different ways than maybe you thought you could. So mm -hmm. do you want to give us an example? N no, I was just, um, your book has been very helpful for me in what you explained to somebody earlier about how you think about what's happening in your life and what you're dreaming. That's taught me a lot. Well, thank you for that. That's and right. We connect, we start connecting with our, our waking life. We, our subconscious mind comes up and kind of works things out because we digest our, all the data we take in from the day. We reconstitute it, recontextualize it, and it comes out in these different symbols and metaphors to tell us, oh, maybe we could be doing things differently. Mm -hmm. that, that's what's been helpful about your book, because in, when you read other dream books, it's kind of overwhelming, and it's, your book has helped me because it's, it, it, it makes it easier to understand the whole process rather than each specific well, thank you for that, I, uh, Maya. Um, metaphor or whatever you call it. Well, what, uh, what a lot of the people in the past, uh, and it's, it's been okay, these uh, dream dictionaries, but dreams are so personal. So an right. image for you, the way I've described in the book, um, you might be dreaming of dogs. Do you have a pet by mm -hmm. chance? Do you have a pet? Yes, I okay. do. Okay, do you have a dog? Yes. Okay, so you have a dog, so you might use dogs in your dream world, and it would be pleasant because you like dogs. Somebody mm -hmm. else might be dreaming of a dog in their dream, but they're a person who's had bad experiences with dogs, and they don't have pets, and uh, it's not a good feeling for them. So it's not a good image for that person. So you can't have a dream book that is meant for everyone. A all dreams are personal. Mm -hmm. So we really have That's to That's what your book has taught me. That's right. And therefore, it's easier to figure it out. I mean, this is wonderful to be able to call and talk to you, but to Thank learn you. how to do it and figure it out, that is fun, actually. Thank you for that. Interesting. And it's interesting. It Probably only interesting to <laughs> me, but so what? No, I think it's interesting to many. I get a lot of good feedback with the book, and I appreciate that you say that. I have some callers waiting, Maya, and I so appreciate okay. you calling in. And we will go deeper if you want to contact me through uh, my website, thedreamclass.com. Okay, I'd love to. Bye for now. I'm ready for my caller. Hello. Hi, Patricia. Yes. Hi, Patricia. This is Françoise. Françoise? Françoise. France. You can call me France. Okay. France. Oh, it's France? Yes. Okay. Okay. And what can I do for you? Do you have a dream for me? Yes. Actually, I re recently had a... Um, Unsettling dream, a different what? than the w unsettling. Unsettling, unsettling. Uh, try to speak just a little bit louder for me, please. Okay, so I, I, I recently had I'm a sorry. dream that um, different than the ones I usually have, oh. and I was walking in a long, narrow tunnel with very low ceiling and dark and um, 
I was very ill at ease mm. and I was walking toward a orange light that I could barely see at the end of the tunnel. Mm. And I woke up before getting there and um, I was not comfortable at all when I woke up. Oh. And I usually have very pleasant dreams or guiding dreams and I have the feeling it's a guiding dream yes but well, I don't know what as it is. colors in our dream we have a section in in the book that is uh, about colors and uh, mm -hmm. that the orange uh, the or the orange chakra this is one of the we have a whole yes. section on colors and mm -hmm. it's the sacral chakra, which is our mm -hmm. creativity and sexuality. So you were going towards it, but it still made you nervous for some reason. So in your waking life, there's something, it just means that there's something you're being drawn, something is coming up for you, whether it's, your, it's both, it can be either or, but it is that chakra we talk about when we get, mm -hmm. when people say they yes. see specific colors in their dreams, we say that really has impacting because you, you, most people don't recognize colors in their dreams on a regular basis, but when they do pop up, they're really popping through to say to us, well, what in that area of my life is coming up for me? So I would say that to you, what, I what is coming up for you in your creativity or your sensuality area of your life that is a mm -hmm. little, a little nerve wracking for you right now, a little, you have a little trepidation going towards it. So we want to mm. connect that feeling with your waking life. This is what's coming up for you. And can you connect mm -hmm. with that in your waking life? where you're a little, trepid, little trepidation in those areas, in an area of those themes? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's really about creativity. Yeah. So, so what I say then, why do you, you can say, what am I doing? <clears throat> excuse me. What am I doing to suppress it? Or do I want to continue moving towards it? But why am I having this? You ask yourself, why am I having this trepidation in this area? <coughs> Very good. Thank you so much. Well, do you want to do you want to work it. through it a little bit? Do you want to talk about why? why ah, sure. Maybe you maybe you have trepidation, and you can start contemplating. What I like to have people do is once I give them the, the message that I re I'm holding up a mirror for you, now I'm reflecting back your dream to you so that you can contemplate or meditate mm -hmm. on, on this translation because the me it's like a message in a bottle that you find at the ocean. There's a message that is written in, let's say it's written in Greek and you don't understand Greek. So you bring it to me to help you translate it. And then I say, this is the message that was brought to you. Now for you to contemplate or meditate on that message. Yes, I mean, I, 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 hmm? I didn't I really like your explanations. It makes totally sense. Um, I was working on a project that was uh, actually a creative Oh. project mm. that was creating a lot of stress mm. and um, you were not wanting to move for so quickly towards it I wanted to move forward and get it done however it was uh, um, nerve-wracking creating a creating a lot of pressure in mm. my life mm-hmm mm-hmm mm -hmm. well the dream oh. your dream world shows the evidence of that how it was affecting you. So you were holding back and not really, w even though you wanted to get it finished, your, your psyche was holding back. So we can yeah. always go deeper Completely. and you can con contact me at thedreamclass.com. I loved br you bringing this dream to me. Thank you so much. My pleasure, thank you. And I just want to say I've, your book is a great book and I really encourage 
everybody to read it. It's very interesting. It's fun and it brings dimension to uh, to our dreams. Thank you so much, Francoise. Call us again. Bye for now. Sure. And I have a new caller. Hi, Patricia. Yes. Who am Hi, I speaking this is with? Lord. What? Pardon? My name is Lord. 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 L yes. Yeah. Oh, I don't have a specific dream. I have a recurring dream, although they're not ever completely the same. But they all seem to be based or revolving around me spending time with someone close. And we're always eating. We're always going out to get food. Mm -hmm. And it's never the same person. It's always a different person who's close to me. But the dreams, they feel so real and so vivid that I, I think that I was actually with them. There's been times where I call and ask about it, and they have no clue what I'm talking about. Well, our dreams aren't about the people in our dreams, really. They're really about aspects of ourself, because everyone in our dreams is an aspect of ourself. So if you would connect with what that person represented to you, you'd be dreaming about that aspect of yourself at the time you were dreaming, like what was going on in your life at that time where that aspect of yourself came through. So that's why we need specifics. And, and when you're eating, well, you're eating, we are feeding ourselves and uh, it's a, a form of um, uh, soothing. Some, it's a, a, a self-soothing thing or we're nurturing ourselves by uh, uh, so these different people in your dreams whether they be men or women uh, and depending on their ages it depends on what you're dealing with your productivity or your feeling centeredness so that's why we need specifics in dreams to really know to, okay, to well be able to connect the dots of what's going on in your waking life to see how you can handle things better Okay, one spe very specific one, the most recent one. I was with my, my best friend, and we'd eaten pizza. And that, that beginning part was very blurry, but I do remember just this green, green meadow of being in that setting as well. You're eating pizza while you're meadow. in a meadow. Yes, yeah, very, very green, though. I remember it being a very vivid, nice green. Mm -hmm. But you're sitting, are you, it's a male or a female you're with? That is a female. Okay, so in, in this case, you're with your yang, because females in our dreams represent our thinking and our projectivity, so it's a little, uh, it's the paradox of the dream world, and so there's something where uh, you are, it's your heart energy, you, that you, green is the heart chakra, and the green is, uh, there was something pleasant about, um, do you love your work or you love what you're doing? Um, yes, yes, I do. Yes, mm -hmm. I do music and it's my favorite thing. Okay, well this expresses the, your, your love and your passion for this, this uh, your work and you're, you're having pizza, that's the perfect food as they say. <laughs> 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 so you're, it's a pleasant dream for you. And this, this particular one, your theme is eating, so you're, 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 you're being satisfied pizza is very satisfying gratifying <laughs> and you're yeah. showing that you have a, a a love for your or your you have a, your your heart is open to your productivity whatever you're doing for your 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 work life or your productivity hmm. does that ring true yes yeah, yes yeah. okay. and that i guess the, the timing of it was before um I guess I experienced the fruits of my life. I guess it was a, a couple of weeks before things started getting a lot better than they were. <laughs> well, that, so. there, that's you. You sense they're they're better. You, you have a sense. You we have a sense in our subconscious mind before things come to our conscious mind because we know. And the more you get into this work, the more you will know. So if you want to get deeper into this stuff and get uh, some new material for your music. Get into the, your dream life with me at uh, dream, thedreamclass.com. Thank you for calling in. And thank you, Patricia. Bye for now. I will take a new caller. Hello? Hello. Hello. Who's this? Yes. Yeah. 
this is Elaine, Elaine and hello. um I agreed with you and that we do dream every night. We just don't always remember them <laughs> when we wake up or we wake up, uh, at least I wake up sometimes if it's going to be really bad or I think something really bad is going to happen, I wake myself up. Don't do that. But Stick I've with it. It's like watching a movie. Let me tell you the trick. The trick to even getting more okay. out of your dreams is to stay in it like you're watching a movie, even if it gets scary. So as, a, as my song said, even scary dreams or happy dreams, they're, they're bringing us messages. Our dreams wish us well. So stick with it like you're watching a movie, the third person. <clears throat> Go ahead. And the other thing, um, two things that seem to be very recurring in my dreams is one is a specific location in Los Angeles. And I've never lived there, but I've driven through there a lot. And I always have a dream that I'm in a house in that specific location and the other one is the ocean or well, let's a stick large with one body dream. of water let's deal with one dream <laughs> one dream at a time okay. so if you're you have a recurring dream where you go to through this place in los angeles is that what you said or um, more than once or is yeah it, it comes dream? it's it uh no it's happened more than once that and water those are the two main things well, the, the well, water dreams are, are always very interesting. Water dreams represent our sensual, sexual side of our life, our romantic relationships. So, um, it, so w specifically, if you want to talk about a water dream, do you have a specific dream or that's regular? Are you in a relationship? No, no. Um, just that if I get really scared or something in the dream, I just seem to always end up in a big body of water. Mm -hmm. What type of big body of water? What's it look like? What's it feel like? Um, I don't know. It's not really an ocean because the ocean would have waves. It never has waves. It's very still. It's a very still, large is, body. Is it like pleasant when lake. you're there? And it, is it pleasant when you're in this body of water? It's just. I'm not in it. I just see this massive body of water, and then I wake myself up. Okay. I think so, I fear drowning or something. Oh, so you have a fear of relationships. This is what this tells me. You see that there's a pot the mm. possibility of relationship, but you don't necessarily want to go near it at this time. You're not ready for that. So is oh. there something you would like to change in your life in that department? Um, would you like to, no, I would don't. you like to test the waters in relationship, the area of relationship? <laughs> I think I've had so many bad ones, I'm done. <laughs> okay, well that's more to talk about in that area, so you, that's, that's what your dream is telling you, that you have a fear of relationships. This was very clear to me, that you fear relationships and you don't see it as, as a, a, a a possibility for you but that's something you can go deeper with with me another time if you like and then the other dream well that's very interesting so we got to that and when you want to talk about that you can contact me at the dream class but let's talk about the other thing the other theme was going through a town and uh, what area of Los Angeles was this you were driving through well it's um, and it's known somewhat to be having many haunted houses. I don't know if you're familiar with Los Angeles or not, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. like the Hancock Park area mm -hmm. with all the very old homes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were going through, and are you scared when you're in the dream going through this area? Does it frighten you, or do you feel comfortable driving through? Yes, it? no. It's scary. I, I, it's scary. Mm hmm Okay, so there's something scary to you about, and are you in a car at this, are you driving? Well, sometimes I'm in, I, no, I'm not driving. Sometimes I'm actually in the house. In, in a house. In a house there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I can't really describe it because I've been in a few homes in that area, but um, nothing, they're, they're massive and they're old mm -hmm. and, 
they have a lot of history. That's well, we're talking about your about houses them. or we're talking about ourselves. So you've got a lot of history that's trying to bubble up for you. You've got a lot of, a lot of old, uh, maybe we might say old baggage that's trying to bubble up and you're trying to suppress it and not deal with it. And then that flows over to the next theme, which is uh, uh, unfinished business in the relationship department. So I'd love to get into that deeper with you. So please contact me at thedreamclass.com. But you've got a couple of themes that you know you can meditate on. And you can always email me and make an appointment. But thank you for calling in Oh, that today. would be awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you, because you've really explained a lot. Bye for now. Do I have another caller? Mm. Hi, Madison. This is Patricia. Hi. Okay, my name is Madison. Yes, hi. Um, I was, nice to meet you. Um, so I just wanted to give a quick background. So I was I was seeing someone for for at least six months, and I really, really, really started liking this person. Like it was really, really. I was I was just head over heels to be honest. Um, but I never like admitted it to the person, but it was very obvious that we both really, really liked each other. So anyway, just things started happening and our, I don't, I mean, I know I'm stuttering because it wasn't like a relationship, but like it was leading to that, I thought. But anyway, things kind of went, or pretty much we ended the dating thing, um, kind of, it wasn't on the best terms, um, so I want to say like four or five months went by and I was, it was hard for me to get over it, but I finally kind of started feeling better about my life and about different things. And I just kind of kept moving forward and out of the blue, literally this person contacted me again and I was in shock because how much time again, the way had things gone by? ended, it wasn't how much time had at gone least by? four, honestly, oh my gosh, I would say at least three or four months. Okay, minimum, so let's minimum get to the dream. Months. Now let's get to the dream. Okay, just wanted to get the background. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so I had a dream, like I want to say a couple of days ago, and I had it one other time too. But anyway, I was I was in the dream. I was at a door. I knocked on the door, and a woman opens the door and she says, "Hi, yeah, follow me." I'm like, "Okay," and I go into a living room, and it's a bunch of women that are like like a bunch of young ladies that are like pregnant so there's at least four women in the room they're all pregnant i'm like uh hi why am i here right now i'm like why 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 did you invite me over she was like we just want to let you know that the person that i'm just talking to you about right now is the father of all their all their children we just want to let you know the person that you're totally talking to because, you're, you're, well, yes so yes. you're talking to a gentleman Yes, the person in? that I'm, that I, I was I was dating. That's the, they, they're, he's their he's their baby's father. I see. Uh -huh. But it's multiple women in the room. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I I just remember again. You know how dreams are. They don't always make sense or an end or or start in a in a clean way. But I just remember being in shock. And then at that point, it like it just like kind of phased out. But I I had a dream similar to that. It was I again I had that something similar to that a dream like that before. I want to say maybe a couple of days prior to that. So I don't know what that, I mean, well, our dreams I know often that come in stage mm -hmm. in, in, in uh, groups. So we often have dreams that lead us up to the culmination. And this one sounds like it was the culmination of, of how you were processing that uh, relationship that went south. And so th when you say there's pre that pregnant women, so it's your ideas that women are pregnant. It's you feeling pregnant with new ideas of going forward. Your, the women represent your ideas, the, uh, the embryos or the, uh, the fetuses, what, uh, the potential babies are your new, are the, do you know whether the babies inside are male or female? I have no idea. Okay, that, okay, but at least the women were there. So you are just stating, you are just stating some new ideas on how to go through life. Your new per, your new self that is emerging. So you are about to. Em this was a recent dream. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you are something is emerging in you 
to go forth, but it's not about the guy. He gave you the impetus, the guy, the relationship person, gave mm -hmm. you the seeds to gestate some new ideas, new ways of thinking. Now, do you have, are you, have you formulated new, uh, new ideas about relationships or new ideas of how you're going to go forth since this one didn't work out? Honestly, not in regards to relationships, but I have, I've started new things up in other areas of my life. So that's what he came is, at a time where I was, yes. This mm -hmm. is productivity because all the women and all the, the, the ones in the dream were women. They are aspects of yourself and those are potential areas of productivity. And you're just stating wow. in these new areas of productivity in your work life or your goals, things like that. So does that make sense to you that you are just stating some it, new ideas in, in productivity? It does. So that's yes. what it is. The, <laughs> The other uh, thing I want to tell you is then tell everyone that when people are in our dreams, it's not about them. It's really about mm. aspects of ourself that are only rep. We have a cast of characters from everyone we've ever met, everyone we've ever seen on television, in the movies, or heard about, or read about, or learned in school. So it, we have a whole s uh, central casting for us to draw upon. And, and including um, uh, animals and landscape and everything uh, to use as our, uh, ca our characters, that they're aspects of ourself. I'm going to say goodbye to you now. Thank you so much for calling in. Okay. And I thank you. I <laughs> don't know. I think I thank you. Bye bye. I may have another caller. Okay, well, that being said, our information is below. My book is The Dream Class, Know Your Dreams, Know Yourself. And as you could hear tonight, you really start to get to know yourself even better than you thought you knew yourself before. And you can contact me, make an appointment, and really get into the juicy stuff at thedreamclass.com and all Know your dreams and know yourself Know for sure, all your dreams always wish you well. Scary dreams and happy dreams do always wish you well. Come on, everybody dream on. Everybody dream on. Know your dreams and know yourself. Cause all dreams wish you well. Scary dreams. Strange things. All things wish you well. Oh yeah, all things wish.